Do you want to rank your content in Google? If so, then this is going to be one of the most important videos that you'll see. The problem that I see with a lot of on-page SEO YouTube videos is that they're showing you and they're telling you all the theory, but they're not showing all of that in practicality. They're not showing it live in a proper example. And so in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I would take on a keyword and how I'd incorporate different uh, keywords in it, how I'll use LSI, what sort of heading sizes I'll use, and each and every detail that you'd think of. But before we get into that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that you can be notified when I upload new content. All right, guys, so for this article, I'm going to be using dog shedding as my primary keyword. If you don't know what a keyword is, it's basically the search term that you want to rank for on Google. So let's say uh, I'm writing an article with the primary keyword dog shedding. What I want is that whenever someone searches for dog shedding on Google, I want to rank here on the first page. Because ranking here will help drive traffic onto my article. Right? So now let's come back over here. As you can see, I already have the title of the article ready. Dog shedding, how to put an end to it. Nice and easy, simple. I don't think I need to explain what that is. But before we get into the details about SEO, you first have to understand what the different heading sizes are. Without understanding these heading sizes, there is no going forth in SEO, right? So basically, there are six different heading sizes ranging from H1 to H6. Now, I can show them to you here in the WordPress editor, but it would be a little more technical here. I first want to show that to you in Google Docs. As you can see, I have a Google Doc already prepared over here. You have H1, H2, H3, 4, 5, and 6. As you can see, the sizes are decreasing as we move ahead, right? So we have H1 as the biggest, H6 as the smallest subheading. The size isn't the only thing that's decreasing as you move from H1 to H6. The importance of that subheading is also decreasing as you move ahead, right? So just, just to make it easier for you, I'm going to omit H4, 5, and 6. Why? Because these are the most useless headings. These are the most useless sizes and you will rarely ever have to use, use them. So I'm just going to be deleting these out so it's easier for you to understand. Now, coming to H1, H2, and H3. H1 is used as the title of the article. H2 is used as the subsection, which means that you use H2 for writing the subsections. H3 for subheading within a subsection. All of these are heading sizes, but the titles are written in H1, subsections are written in H2, and then if you have further subheadings, within a subsection, you'll use H3. Now let's go back to our live example so I can show it to you in action. As you can see, we have dog shedding, how to put an end to it. This is the title of our article. Now WordPress doesn't really allow you to change the, the size of the title, but this is in fact an H1. You don't get to see it, you don't get to change it, but this is H1. Let's say we're writing a subsection on factors that affect shedding, right? So here we'll go and change the block style. We select heading. By default, WordPress chooses H2, right? So this is factors that affect shedding. And further subheadings for those factors would be in H3. So let's say our first factor is 
dog breed then we have factor number two as age factor three season right so this as you can see is a regular subsection and then we have further three sub subheadings within this subsection so these further subheadings would be in h3 all three of them as you can see and this subsection will be in h2 and this as i mentioned you can't really see it but it is in h1 now just to make this look like a real article i'm going to be adding some dummy text in here so here as you can see i've added some dummy text laura mipsium blah blah i'm going to be adding this under all of these subheadings so you can see the whole thing in action right so here you have it all right guys so now that we have the rough outline of our article obviously we'll have more subheadings and further subsections if we want i'm just going to keep this brief for now right so let's say that our primary keyword as i mentioned is dog shedding which means we want to optimize our article for this keyword now this means that we are going to be using dog shedding shedding in dogs and other variants of this keyword within the article these will basically be our primary keywords so let's say i'm going to be using dog shedding here in the first paragraph i'll sprinkle it here throughout the paragraph you know dog shedding here as well uh, throughout the article i'm just going to be sprinkling it and then again dog shedding here in the end right now you don't just want to be using dog shedding in the paragraphs but also within the subheadings as you can see so factors that affect shedding i'll optimize this a bit more and make this factors that affect dog shedding so this shows that we're using our keyword within the uh, when within the uh, h2 titles uh, or h2 subheadings as well um, to just make it sound better i can also use it as factors that affect shedding in dogs google is smart enough to understand that shedding in dogs is the same thing as dog shedding so it will definitely count as the same keyword all right guys so as you can see we've already optimized our article for our primary keyword but modern seo isn't just about working with primary keywords in fact secondary keywords are very important as well secondary keywords which are also known as lsi are terms that help google understand that you've thoroughly covered the topic that you are writing on just to give you an example if I'm writing an article on Friends, the TV show, I hope all of you have seen that. So if I'm writing an article on Friends, it would be incomplete without mentioning uh, Joey, Chandler, Ross, Rachel, all of the characters, and let's say other important things like Central Park, New York, all of this stuff. Friends cannot be detached from them. So whoever is writing on that topic will definitely cover these things as well. Now, how will you know what secondary keywords there are for dog shedding? Simple. Go and search for dog shedding in Google. Go down here and you will see that Google provides these searches related to dog shedding. All of these are secondary keywords these are lsi you can use them as secondary keywords in your article now there are a lot of different ways that you can find lsi and that you have a lot of software and a lot of websites as well that will find lsi for you but this is the most simple and obvious way because google is already providing them to you so google knows that whoever writes in dog shedding 
probably will also cover dog shedding remedies will it will also cover coconut oil for dog shedding dog shedding products dog shedding brush all of this should be a part of your article right so for convenience i've already listed these over here i've already listed all of these as lsi over here so what i'll be doing is i'll also be sprinkling these lsi within my article so dog shedding remedies i'll just add it here you know coconut oil for dog shedding again just copy it adding it within the article and you get the idea right so i'm just going to be using these in there not boring you at all so just moving on you can also let's say if it makes sense best dog shedding supplement you can use it here even as a subheading h2 and you use it here and you can write a whole section on that right so you can even use that over here some lower mipsium text and you added a whole you know section on that that is completely up to you use lsi here in the subheadings you can use it here in the, in the body of the article just make sure that you are using and sprinkling uh, the primary and secondary keywords of your article within the body now these are basically the basics of on-page seo but that doesn't mean that's all. There are a lot of other things that you need to consider while doing on-page SEO. So for example, the link to your article is very important. As you can see, you have the link here, dog shedding, how to put an end to it. This is the whole title of the article. By default, this is what you will see, but you just want to direct your URL for the exact keyword that you have so since dog shedding is my keyword I'm just going to be removing everything else I just want dog shedding I'm making it very obvious to Google that this is what I want to rank on now this was our URL but that's not all there is also a lot of other stuff that you need to keep in mind while optimizing your content. Firstly, download the Yoast SEO plugin if you are on WordPress. Yoast SEO, honestly, for all beginners, is the go-to place, the go-to resource for understanding how well their content is optimized, right? So here you can see Yoast will, will show you at the bottom how your article will, be, will look. On Google as you can see it shows me the title it shows me how it will look on Google it, it it gives me the whole you know preview now there is this thing called meta description what is meta description it's basically what the, the short snippet that Google shows when your article pops up in the search uh, search terms here, as you can see, this is the title, this is the link, and then this is the meta description, right? Now, meta description isn't vital, it isn't important, it isn't necessary, but if you do write a meta description, that would be great. As you can see, this article did write a meta description. Looking for ways to keep your house fur free? We've got seven dog shedding home remedies that will help keep Fido clean, blah, 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 blah. As you can see, it's quite enticing. It's, it's, it does make you want to link, uh, it, it does make you want to click through and read the article. So not only is this good for the readers because it's, it's enticing, it's helping them increase their click through rates. But at the same time, it's also great for SEO because, as you can see here, Google has bolded this word, dog shedding. Why? Because that's what you searched for. So by using your keyword in the meta description, 
you can increase not just your click through rates but you can also increase your chances of ranking on Google so here I'll be editing my meta description as well Laura Mipsium blah 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 just making it a bit short because these are supposed to be shorter and I will use somewhere over here dog shedding as well so guys that was my video on how you can do on-page SEO for your article and rank in Google make sure that if you like this video you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that you can be notified when I upload new content till next time this is Khalil signing off